C.S. Lewis wrote, It is a good rule, after reading a new book, never to allow yourself another new one till you have read an old one in between. So with his advice in mind, even though there are many worthwhile or relatively recent books that we could consider, I'm going to recommend, I'm going to talk about an old book today. This year, 2021, is the 500th anniversary of the publication of Philip Melanchthon's, well, it depends on who you listen to to pronounce the traditional title, Lochi or Lokai or uh, Loci Communes, uh, common places or perhaps common topics first published in 1521. They're obviously older books uh, in the Christian tradition, but 500 years is a good long time for a theology text to have stuck around. The book was written when Melanchthon was still in his 20s. Uh, but it was what essentially launched Melanchthon's reputation as a Lutheran theologian, a theologian in the uh, tradition of the Lutheran Reformation. And for Lutherans, anyway, not much further justification uh, should be needed for paying this text some attention. Uh, there are two translations into English that are fairly widely available. One by Wilhelm Pauk, published in the Library of Christian Classics by Westminster Press in 1969, and an even more recent one by Christian Preuss, published by Concordia Publishing House in 2014. The Loci Communes is sometimes called the first Protestant systematic theology, and I suppose something had to be. But it's not systematic in the modern sense of trying to cover and to treat a really comprehensive range of topics uh, in theology to uh, see how they fit together, how they uh, work together coherently. Instead, Melanchthon, uh, as he points out in the beginning, he, he lists a number of, of topics and says, I'm only going to look at several of these. And He's very clear about why he does that. The stated intention of his text is to direct, is to point the reader um, a better way, um, uh, better equipped, being better equipped to read the Bible. There are several famous emphases that Melanchthon uh, brings forward. The various ways in which uh, the Lutheran tradition has characterized law and gospel uh, can be found in one of their very early forms. Um, here in uh, the, the Lochi, and as many people have pointed out, um, Melanchthon, he doesn't simply, I define law this way, and I define gospel this way, and, uh, and, and put them over against each other, but he uses them as, as a hermeneutical principle for reading scripture. As he points out, these two ways of speaking, these two ways of thinking are, are scattered throughout scripture, and he gives many examples. Similarly, with another uh, a famous Lutheran uh, distinction, the one between faith and work. But one of the most interesting things is that he starts out with what we would now call theological anthropology. In other words, he starts out by talking about what human beings are and what they're capable of and the relationships between the will and the, and the mind and so forth. And although we might not be able to go with the particular conclusions that Melanchthon draws in this area, this uh, this approach of giving uh, uh, particular and sustained attention to what human beings are, what they're like, what their what human nature is, uh, is very relevant for the ways in which theology, Christian theology, and Lutheran theology uh, think of their place in the public arena, in the public sphere. That by itself would, would be enough reason to recommend uh, reading Melanchthon even after 500 years. In these and many other ways, this old book, written originally in a language that many of us don't know, into a context which many of us find hard to understand, can still inform, can still inspire our bearing witness to the gospel to and for our time. Yeah.